Okay, so who the fuck would name a drink Gamer Fart Guacamole <laughs> 9000? Isn't that the the cold ones flavor? I don't think so. What's but the... it? I don't know. Hold what on, the let me start this timer. <laughs> okay, I, oh, go ahead. We've gotten it twice now in the little sample packs, and both times I'm like. I'm not going to try that. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'll, I'll try it. I need something to put in my Cuyahoga cup. Yeah, um, I don't want it. You can have it. I'm actually not a big fan of the texture of the Gamer Sub flavors. It's got like a weird medicine-y texture to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really... That's why either. I thought it was emergency when you came in here. Yeah, I prefer it. that because it's like fizzy. I've met a lot of people who like the taste I, of emergency. I love it. I love it. I wish they made it without the... um without the vitamins okay hi welcome back yeah um, welcome back we had recorded an episode but it was way too long and we didn't even attempt to begin anything with it we and procrastinated then, too long then elden rings came out so hello welcome to the elden rings episode yeah skylar and i are the farthest in elden we are farther than anybody this is going to be our like our video proof of that today is march the 5th and as of right now we're pretty much have done just about everything you could imagine we're both over 100 hours, over level 115, and have, like, scoured the wiki, and we've done it all. <laughs> yeah, I'm at level 108, or I'm, I'm at 108 hours already. Yeah, boy. It's already, like, my seventh most played game on Steam. It's pretty good. Um, so we've, most of you little losers get stuck at, a uh, Godfrey the Grafted, Godric the Grafted. He ain't nothing. LOL, foo 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 foo. <laughs> Anime villain laughs. Uh, so we've beaten like. We found like five different endings before we even got to the wiki, right? Yeah. We should. The, we're gonna have the spoilers thing up. I'm not even gonna talk about it. We found one where like. The, there's the one that everyone finds that I see with Rainy the Witch, and you can marry her, and that's like the Moonlight ending. But then, like, the Elden Lord ending has, like, five of its own individual endings that you can get by meeting certain criterias. Pretty um, ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy how much to this game there is. It's insane. I, like, was just invading people and having fun, and then through that I found, like, a whole secret hell area with a hell boss. <laughs> and it's, it's insane. I hear people talking about Radon and how he's the hardest thing, and, like, you ain't... You, you motherfuckers haven't even seen Mog Lord of Blood yet. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, the chaos ending I stumbled across, the fact that that has an illusory wall that goes... <laughs> yeah, that I stumbled across! Yeah! It goes down to a fucking ant layer <laughs> that then goes down to a, a tiny city that has... What's her name? Mia? Fia. Fia. It has Fia in it. That's the Which, lady that gives you hugs. If you decide to hug her again, then goes into another boss fight. Yeah, the the necro the the lich dragon. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And that's an ending. <laughs> and that's an ending. Yeah, when. It... <laughs> but the chaos ending locks you in. So if you want to change your ending, okay. Look, when you get to the big fire door, don't do it unless you are one hundred percent sure that is the ending you want. Because, Skylar, you, you go into, like, this pit. It's underneath the city, the sewers of Lindal. There's there's a pit that's hidden behind, like, three illusionary walls. And then you have to do, like, a ten-minute platform puzzle. And then you get to the ground, and that breaks and takes you to another area. And then if you get in front of this door, take all of your clothes off. The other half of the fingers, the two fingers, there will be three of them, that grab you and burn your character, and you get locked into an ending where you destroy everything. Mm -hmm. There is like a weird series of arbitrary events that you can go through to get an item that lets you remove that. But after a certain point, you're just kind of fucked and you can fuck up that quest and lose the item. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's insane. It, it's crazy. Good game. An unbelievable game unbelievable fucking game they came out swinging from miyazaki they came out swinging with this they said oh you thought cyberpunk that was gonna no 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 let, let us show you and in all of the trailers they only showed you like 10 percent of the map they showed you the route to stormvale castle stormvale castle and then a couple of cutscenes outside of that yeah 
there's there's so we completed the map. Our map is filled out. Yeah. Yeah. Above and below ground. Oh yeah, I'm missing one map underground, and it's because it's full of fucking ants. Fuck, fuck. Who, if if anybody from From is listening to this, whoever decided to put in the ants, fuck you. Just just fuck you. I'm not censoring out that. Fuck you. How dare you? Like it is to spite me purely. <laughs> Remember how bad Fallout Three was with bugs. It's like that. It's like that level of, like, they're everywhere and you wouldn't even expect them to be there. And they're in, like, a city at the bottom of the world. Like, how did they... Why are they here? There are people, like, riding ants. (laughs) There's a city that's on a cliff that is, like, supposed to be like, oh, we worship space and and space gods. And then there are dudes riding ants there. It's because it's underground. Uh, the ant with the big head that blocks the door. <laughs> I didn't know those were real. Yeah. Tell them about it. Um, what? The ant, the door ant. Oh, and light yeah. them like you did me and lighten them. There is an ant that has a big fat ass round head. Um. We're not, we're not going to put a picture of it up from, and, um, in solidarity with my other. Oh, I was ins- going insane. to, but we don't have to. No, okay. no, no, I'm not going to do that to them. It has a big ass round head. It oh it uh it sits at the front of the ant hive or nest or whatever and it literally just blocks the hole with its head. <laughs> it's a fucker. Yeah. It's kinda like the trapdoor spider, but it uses its head instead of a trapdoor. It sucks. I hate it. Trapdoor spiders just reminded me of those. Oh my god. Creepy crawl, those fuckers are in the ground for a reason. I don't want to look at them. They're there yeah. for a reason. Fuck them. But, um, yeah, you can get their head as a shield, and if you shield bash, it does poison damage. Status ailments in this are real big. Um, the game definitely seems to favor intelligence. Against you. (laughs) I was trying status ailments. It's not a fucking very good build. Yeah, you you did. You did have those two daggers. I've just been using blood pretty much exclusively. I had a rapier that did, uh... Toxic and poison, and then you had... It did poison and scarlet rot, and then I had a sword that did sleep. The sleep sword wasn't that good because when you're swinging all wildly, odds are you're going to knock them out of the sleep before you realize they're asleep because it takes a second for them to fall asleep. So I switched that out with the... Fuck, what was it? You have that big rose hammer you used for a while. I used it for a second. It's not that good. Um... Then I switched that out with the Madness I'm glad pike. the Great Sword's always, it's still to this day old reliable. Or I don't think it's a pike, but... It was it was Vike Spear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I switched out with that, which is pretty good in PvE. Shit. It's not going to be good against, it's probably not going to be good in PvP. But it sucks against bosses, because bosses... Like, the only status ailment that fucks fucks them is bleeding. Yeah. (laughs) They have so much health, poison is just so so slow. And Scarlet Rot is decent, but, like, it's just different poison. So you can, it's pretty much, you can have poison twice. Yeah. But poison... It fucks you up, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But poison twice doesn't do much against an enemy with... 100,000 yeah, health. Yeah, 50,000, 100,000 health, yeah, when it's... T- 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 you have to do percentage-based for any status ailment to be worth shit. And I haven't looked at the scaling for, like, madness and stuff, but it ain't the move against the boss I'm on now. You're on a uh, Melania, right? Melania, I'm, if that's her name. Um, I'm, I'm just using Big Great Sword. I'm using the Big Fuck Off Berserk Reference Great Sword, and... That's that's always just my starting build in these games. It's just pure strength, and if I can, I'll dual wield ultra great swords. I have too much testosterone for a shield. I absolutely oh fucking Louis toy. I absolutely refuse to use a shield. Um, but I I've, I've I've been fucking with the blood a lot. I got blood on my my great sword, and it's just I think it, in other games it was thirty percent just whatever their max health is. Once once they got bleed, it's boom thirty percent damage to them. Yeah. I don't know what it is in this, but it's fucking good. Like even like my it little, seems pretty fucking even strong. like my little piss splash spell that just does bleeding as they stand into it. It's a hundred damage, a hundred damage, a hundred damage. Oh, there's six thousand damage right there, dead. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, when I was using oh, I was using the uh, pinwheel weapon thing, 
the saw blade, the big circular yeah, saw yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the, ripping the into him. The whirly gig saw. Yeah, that was ripping into him, but that's also bleed, and I'm not trying to steal your build. Sorry, bro. Sucks. Because bleed is like the only status or er, passive effect, is what it's called, that does shit against big enemies. If you're struggling with that game, I've been on Twitter, like looking at what other people are doing. Don't don't try to rush to get through the castle. The castle, those are goals that you need to meet. If you can't beat Margit, go farm. Go explore. We we were don't worry level... about farming. Just go explore. explore. Yeah. Fill the map out. If you find a cave, try to complete it. If you get all the way through and hit a boss you can't beat, go explore somewhere There's else. There's a cave down the street with some yeah. more stuff in it. We were level like 40 and 50 before we even started to do Stormvale Castle. We were so over. I beat. I beat God. What's his name? Godric the Grafted. I know it's him, and there's another dude named Godfrey. So I get the it one up. with the dragon arm. Yeah, he's Godric, right? I think so. I beat Godric the Grafted my fifth try, and I beat Margit my third, just because I was so strong for the area. Mm -hmm. Margit is the very first one, right? Yeah, it's Margit and Margot. Yeah, I I tried, uh, Margit. Yeah. I tried Margit once. I said, oh, I'm underleveled. So I went and explored. I filled out the entire map, and then I went back. The map of the first continent. Yeah. You even, yeah, Skylar no, even. No, <laughs> you, can, you can actually go around yeah, you... Margit or whatever. You can go up to the lake continent first You had thing. gotten around Stormvale and came up to him from the back. Yeah. And I'm, I'm actually pretty sure that um you can go up the lift that takes you to the alt. Altus Plains. Yeah. I think you can activate that lift before you do any boss fight. I don't even think you need to fight a boss to get there. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure if you get both sides of that seal, you can use oh, that think, at the bottom I of the lift. I think the only area it locks you out of is the Lindell Capital because the fingers are not letting you go in there. I think you... I mean, what, I think what, that's you just the have only... to fight the Draconic... You have to get two of the Simple. runes before the fingers are like, okay, we're going to stop barring your passage and you can get in there. I think that's the only place you can't go. Because Speed runs for this game is going to be weird. Nuts. It's going to be crazy. Fast travel anywhere, as long as you aren't in combat. It's going to be crazy. Ugh. They're going to find out a glitch that lets the horse move twice as fast or something. <laughs> it's like, oh, actually, if you summon it while you're rolling and you push circle... Uh, at this rhythm, some shit like that, I bet. It's it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. People that are seeing it are like, oh, it needs weapon degradation. I it, it sucks that my build can't use... I'm a strength build, and I can't use a staff. That's so shit. Why can't I use all these spells? I have 40 strength. <laughs> Why do you think? That people are, are, like, complaining that, like... Of course they're just complaining. That, but, like, about shit, like... I can't use every weapon I come across, and Breath of the Wild did it better because, like, yeah, the weapons break, but as a turnaround, I can just use every weapon I come across. Like, that's that's dog shit. They did it in other Souls games, and it was dog shit in those. It was such dog shit to the point where, like, it didn't even matter because you could just rest at a bonfire and fix all of your weapons. So, like, it, it didn't even matter to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> not, in, not in Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 1, you had to repair your shit. You did have to repair your shit in Dark Souls 1. Yeah, yeah you did have to take frequent... But in, in Dark Souls 1, you're swapping shit so fucking quick. You're going through weapons and armor fast. Not me. As, yeah, not I me. I stuck with the Grave Lord Great Sword. Sword. Yeah. <laughs> same, same. Um... But then, yeah, Dark Fuck Souls 2... Fuck people who too. say the, the, the Black Knight Halberd is the best weapon, and you you don't use the Gravelord Sword, obviously, sir. But the Gravelord Sword is is good until you're the end of Playthrough 2. Because at that point, you've been doing the same damage since the end of Playthrough 1, because it scales like an E in everything. Is that, that it what scales a scaling is? Is E? It's terrible scaling. Oh my god. I never noticed because its damage is so good. <laughs> yeah, so once you get later into the game, the scaling for it's shit. The Black Knight Greatsword is pretty good, but it's really slow. So what I was doing when I finally got rid of it was the just the Black Knight Sword. Sword. I upgraded it all the way. You can't do different affinities in Dark Souls 1, can you? 
Yeah, you can. You, you can't make do... it scale more with strength, can I you? I don't think so, no. But no. you can put, like, lightning and fire on yeah. it and magic, and that changes its scaling with those. I think Dark I just... Souls 1, it's, it's weird. With I think weapons. I just upgraded it all the way, and its scaling is really good, and it ended up doing more damage than the Gravelord Sword with my scaling, because I had such ridiculously high strength right. by the end of my second playthrough. I like it when you're scaling. It's, like, so crazy that... And I really think of it in Dark Souls 2. When, like, the, the moment I was like, oh, weapon scaling is just nuts was when I got those dragon fists, those dragon bone fists. And they were unupgraded, but they have an A scaling, so they were already off base doing crazy damage. And I, I was just kind of like, oh, scaling's actually stupid, stupid, stupid good. And yeah. I think uh, on my Elden Ring's character, I'm actually about to uh, just fully upgrade a great sword and make it heavy and dump, like, into 70 strength. And then just go swing on her. Yeah, you can respec in Elden Rings, by the way. Yeah, you it, aren't locked to your build. It you have. To, I see people saying that there's no way to change it except it's not true. You have to beat a really easy boss and then use a limited resource. But after a certain point, that limited resource you get like twenty of it. Yeah, in just an area. Yeah, there's one area where if if you get there, you can find like twenty of that resource. Easy, Enemies easy. there, drop it. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can farm it. Right? Yeah, the 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 mimic tiers drop them. The, the larval larva larval tier, yeah. yeah. And once you can do that, I mean, I've re-rolled three times in the <laughs> last twenty four hours trying to find a build a build that I like. All I did was take some points off of my stats to bring them down to forty, and then put up my faith. Yeah. Yeah. Faith is faith and intelligence are favored in this game. It's ridiculous. Such a turnaround. I have every legendary ornament and most of the weapons, and more than half of them I can't use because they fail with skate. They a little, little. They scale with faith and intelligence. Yeah. So if you're a faith build, it will pay off in the end, and if you're an intelligence build, it will pay off massively in the end. Because some of some of the coolest looking weapons are faith and intelligence. Yeah. At least somewhat. I think you still need some strength and dex. Yeah, yeah, quite of course, because it's a weapon. Yeah. Um, when I, when I turned my arcane up pretty high, I wasn't finding many weapons that I could use with that. Besides that one axe, because it's it, just bleed stuff. The arcane. Yeah, arcane's it, bleed. It had. It had like, an S scaling in it, and with. Like thirty five, arcane, it was doing like, three hundred damage. Mm, I mean, it's a one-handed weapon. Yeah, but still, yeah. that's goofy. I have more scaling than that, or I have more damage than that on just the scaling of my greatsword. I know. The scaling of my greatsword is, like, plus 300 than something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to, I swear I'm about to have, like, 70 strength. I'm, oh. I have just enough carry weight, a decent amount of health, and then fucking... Strength. Strength. It's the way to go. I'm probably not even. Gonna, I'm probably gonna have like baby FP bar. He. <laughs> I think I. I might have just gotten over a hundred FP, and that's just so I can spam my one blood spell. Yeah. I was using uh, it for madness spells, but all sorry, of them are super inaccurate. Sorry if you're somebody I've invaded. My name is Red. Um. So I, yeah. Sorry. Sorry I, if you don't play Elden Ring. That's <laughs> this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> if you don't play Elden Rings, what what are you even doing? Yeah, if you don't, what do. What are you doing? Do it. Just just do it. It had, like, the highest rating scores before it was even available to the public. Reviewers that I hate, I agreed with because it's just good. If you call it the Skyrim of Dark Souls, just don't subscribe to this podcast either. Just leave this podcast and don't come back because we're just going to say things that are going to hurt your feelings. And this just isn't for you. I'm sorry. It's not the Skyrim of Dark Souls. Don't don't say that. I'll find you. I will find you. I'm keeping a transcript of everybody who subscribes and comments and watches these videos, and I will come for you if you say that. Do you feel like Elden Rings has, um, like, generalized the gameplay to where it's more friendly for a lot of people? No. 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 Do you think Dark Souls 3 did that more? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Dark Souls 3 felt like something he put out so he could be like, now leave me alone while I work on my real game. Yeah. Sekiro, now that Elden Rings is out, I am 100%. I've talked to you about this. 
I am 100% of the opinion that Sekiro was purely just a play test for jumping and sneaking. Purely. It is it is so short. There's hardly nothing to it. It's pretty short. And the big thing about it was that you could jump and sneak. Yeah, I ran through that game in like a week last year. And I wasn't even like super rushing. I think we talked about it on the podcast about how I played it when it came out. And I was like, this game sucks. Fuck this game. And then yeah. a year later, I played it in a Saturday and Sunday and had it beaten by Monday with yeah. Isha and ending. Yeah. Ugh. Elden Rings is good. Please, please play it. Do not rob yourself of this experience. I wish... I've, I've been playing Dark Souls since before Dark Souls 2 came out, but not quick enough into Dark Souls 1 so I could be a big part of the community. Do not rob yourself of this experience because you are going to play this game inevitably. You are going to like it, and you're going to be like, damn, I wish I played it when it came out, when the servers were live. If I put down my sign, I am summoned before I can even pick up my vape and hit it. It is less than five seconds. Yeah, being there for the launch is really, really nice. If I invade, it takes me three seconds. <laughs> like it. it Same is... for me. He's on PlayStation. I'm on, I'm on PC, and mine. When I sit down the sim, the symbol, it's written, and I'm being summoned and instantly. I will, I will say I heard a lot about how like this game was like if you can run it, it just kind of being a coin flip, but. I, all of my friends are playing it on PC, and only one of them has had to switch to PS5 because his computer was unoptimized for it. Skylar just had to use my graphics card yeah. and my computer. For, for In Elden Ring's defense, my graphics card is a GTX 660, 2 gigabytes of VRAM. It's from, like, 2013. So I kind of understand that uh, such a big game wouldn't really run it but also that being said it has been updated and it might run it now when just, i switch back just give it on get it on steam start it up if it doesn't run refund it get it on a console yeah. it runs i've played for over 100 hours and i got my first crash last night after 100 hours of playing finally in i a, got a first crash in 108 hours on my pc it has crashed maybe Maybe six times. It's usually on a loading screen. That's pretty stable for a PC game. Yeah. Honestly. Um, in, it, in one sitting of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, it'll crash six times. Well, you better be over here chewing on some fucking plastic. Give me that. Come here. Give me Vampire that. Vampire the Masquerade crashing is usually the end of a sitting of Vampire the Masquerade for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, once it crashes, it's usually like, oh, when, when did I save last? Ten minutes ago? I'll get back to this tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I fucking, I'm, I'm of the opinion right now after playing that mod again, that a clan quest mod, that modder, modded level quests are shit and terrible and modders just need to not do it because they always try to captivate on the magic that was the creation of that game and then they always fall flat. Like, holy fuck, the, the clan quest section for that mod is so bad it, I think I have soft locked myself out of completing it on my recent playthrough. What, the game itself? The game itself, because you have to get through the section to complete it. And I think I have just soft locked my save on this character. That's pretty bad. Yeah. So it's in like downtown, downtown. It's like downtown Santa Monica. And, um, or downtown LA. And there's this, that you're like infiltrating the Sabbat. And there's this part where it's like, oh, go talk to this guy. And he's like, runs this whorehouse and he's got my sister in there. And like, don't kill him because we're Sabat and we don't kill each other. But like, you just got to, I'm tired of him fucking with me. Yeah. So you get there and he's like, oh, well, this is, this is my finest piece of Latino ass. You, you want this girl, you're going to have to go find me another finer piece of Latino ass. So I would like, as I do when I get in the area, I just kind of poke around a little bit to get my feel. And I was like, oh, yeah. There's a laundry mat just right down the way where there is this beautiful, beautiful Latino goddess in there. And, like, I'll just bring her back there. Oh, fucking a laundry mat human, right? Just a regular, not even a ghoul, not a vampire, just a laundry mat human. Specifically for this quest that I have to complete to advance. I have to bring him this woman, take this girl's sister back to her before I can advance. And there's probably were other some beautiful latino goddesses around the area that i could have knocked out and drugged back there against their will but i didn't know that that one was there and i it was like 4 a.m i was just trying to progress 
and just blitz through so I could, you, you know how it is. You just want to get stuff done before you go to sleep so you don't got to start yeah, up on the same yeah, stupid yeah. shit. You just want to get this you dumb get shit out of the way you. so you start fresh. Yeah. yeah. So I was trying to do that. So I just, I'll just go there, knock her out, take her back, whatever. I'm, I'm sure it won't matter too much. Mm. I go there. I, I could not fucking dominate her into doing it. I couldn't seduce her into doing it. I couldn't black her. She just absolutely refused to do it. So I said, fuck that, and I beat her up. And then it let me interact with her body and take her back there. So fast forward, four quests later, four story quests later. So I'm like an hour through past where I was. I've gone on like an additional hour and a half. So there's reloading would be, it would be, it'd be asked to just reload back an hour that far if I even had a save. Yeah. I get a quest and it's like, okay, I need you to go down to the laundry mat and talk to the chica down there and figure out what's going on with the drug trade. I can't talk to her anymore. Because you <laughs> killed just, her. I didn't kill her. She's just in the prostitute house. So I try to go to the prostitute house, and if I try to walk back there to talk to her, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, you just can't go back there. you got to pay me first, and then you can go back there. Did you pay him? So I paid him, and then it immediately cuts to a scene of me feeding off of her. And then you know how it is in, Va- in Bloodlines. When you feed off somebody, they sit there stunned, and you have to wait. So I'm like, okay, I'll just sit here and fucking wait. Before she can come undone from, like, the stunning of being fed on, he busts in and says, all right, you're done, get out. I tried no clipping back there, and he's just got an AI thing where after you cross a certain certain threshold, he runs at you. He's like, no, you can't get back there. What are you doing? So he'll, like, run at me. I'm, like, no clipping around the house. And this house is a fan-made the, mission. This is a fan-made mission. Why would a fan of this game <laughs> say, oh, anywhere, if you pass this threshold anywhere in the map, this man will know you it's were just there a little and cell. run inside of a building. He's like in a house. But if if he doesn't know about you, why would he run to you? Right. That's so against the design Dying of that of the game. game. Yeah. Yeah. He's like no clipping. He's countering my no clip to no clip at me to tell me that I can't be in there. How are you going to be a fan of that game to the point that you make missions for it and do something like that? It's almost like Fallout 3. <laughs> I was a fan of Fallout 3 for a while. Uh, what happened? I still like it sometimes. What happened? I realized that everyone in that game is an asshole for absolutely no reason. And even though you're the... You're like the special... Destined for greatness... Child from the vault that... Everyone depends on something for. And... Even like when it comes down to... Oh, you have to flip this switch and get irradiated and die. Oh, no, I can't do <laughs> it. This is your job, my friend. This is, <laughs> I yeah. will not rob you of your destiny. Look at yeah. that. It's a literal mutant immune to the radiation. Yeah. <laughs> That's the case. And yet everybody treats you like you're the scum of the earth. Uh, what the dirt. fuck do you want? Why the fuck are you talking like to me Like you're right the now? dirty gum on the bottom of their shoe. I could fucking kill you to a level 50 lawn wanderer. It, it literally doesn't an matter. an RPG that automatically fires. Dude, I have a Tesla cannon and a thousand <laughs> shots for it. I could kill you over a thousand no times over. No through the sky with 10,000 pounds of power armor. <laughs> I have hellfire armor and a Tesla cannon. And you're treating me like this, really? Uh, see, what, what happened with me... Is with a lot of people in our age demographic, at least Fallout Three was their first one that they played. It was mine. I played New Vegas first, so I already had like this is what a good game is in my mind when I went into Fallout Three. So like, I knew going into Fallout Three that there was something not good about it going into it. I just yeah. did not put it to words for years and years and years. And then I played TTW, and I got to play them back to back. And it visualized it for me, like where everything went wrong. Yeah, it it's like night and day those those games. It's crazy. Yeah. See, I'm the type to skip through dialogue. I don't care what they have to say. Tell me where to go. I'll go there. I want to see numbers. I want to see the map <laughs> fill out. I want to memorize how to get around this building. But then once you like. Pay attention to the way they're talking and everything consistently. Like consistently. The, the entire <laughs> consensus of the fucking wasteland is that you're just butting your nose into everything and you're a piece of shit for it. Even if you play like perfect like 
perfectly good, good karma, goody that, two-shoes. that's another thing is, like, no matter how you play, it doesn't even fucking matter. No, you yeah. might as well play evil. Because they matter. treat you the same way. <laughs> the the biggest the, the biggest punishment for being like literally nuking a town, the biggest punishment is your dad says, We'll talk about that later. They and don't then he even, dies. They don't even kill the quest giver in the town. She just appears somewhere else. Yeah. Moria Brown. <laughs> she turns into a ghoul and goes to the under and then underworld you, you can or whatever. Tell her I blew it up and did it to you, and then she's like, Oh, I'm sure you had your reasons. It's okay. <laughs> Our little tutorial quest, which that is one thing I will say is good game design. Some It's a neat tutorial. It's a good tutorial. It, it's kind of a tutorial, but that's the thing. Like it it tells you so much about the game to finish her quest line. It takes you to a lot of places around the map, which leads you through other places that you'll come back to later, just out of curiosity. But it feels like if you just rushed through her missions it, it would be kind of boring. So I remember every time I played it in the past, I'd play a couple, I'd play a mission of hers, I'd go do some other missions. I'd play a mission of hers, I'd do some other missions. By the time you come back to her, like the, the even just the second or third time, it feels like really basic. Because I don't want to go and finish one person's like life work in a single sitting. Maybe I don't feel like going to pick landmines up off the ground and go then go find a mole rat and then the go the find stick. yeah it's it's basic stuff and yep. that's like and it, that's the thing is that's kind of that whole game is go here do this come back to me yeah go here do this come back to me like You've, i think but well, i feel like it's clever the way that you know each thing a lot of them give you a little perk one gives you a food purifier that makes food heal you more one gives you... Uh, I like the, the Dream Crusher one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's another neat thing of it. But <laughs> as you go through, you get little perks and shit. One's a food purifier. One's like a perk that makes you not take as much either radiation or it makes like minor radiation not make you sick or something like that. But it's neat because it sets you up a little bit. It gives you little bonuses Depending on how you react to her, you get different re rewards. Like, if you're a smartass, you get a different book at the end than if you're like, oh, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Oh, yeah, I finished every objective. Oh, you want me to go kill mole rats? <laughs> if you're an asshole about it, if you're nice about it, it, it will give you, like, either the book will give you more charisma or the book will give you more strength and shit like that. Or you can say, no, 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 that book's dumb. Uh, why can't you do it yourself? Oh, because you're not you're not fit enough to do it you're not strong enough to do it well then who are you to write a book about it if you, if you can't <laughs> then why are you writing a book about it she's like oh i guess you're right and then you get the dream kill uh, crusher perk and it just makes them i think it makes enemies less likely to get critical on you mm -hmm. and that's pretty cool but once i figured that out that's all i did though yeah because i don't feel like going to going to landmine you just want a perk reward yeah yeah i don't feel like going to Going to landmine, I think is the name of the town or something like that. Mine and then field. there's a sniper that's shooting at you from the top of the building who by the time you get that quest can kill you in one shot. Yeah. Yeah. And then going to Super Duper Mart where there's a crippled death claw in front of it. Which <laughs> that's so stupid. But he, that's so he he's already messed up when you get there because he's been fighting, but you can also just run past him. But I didn't I, I didn't see him for so long. I watched somebody else's video about Fallout 3 and I was like, wait, that happens? Are you fucking yeah. kidding me? And then you go into DC to get the mole rat cave. And like it's weird. It feels like they meant for it to be in the very early game, but they take you to later in the game type of areas. It's because Bethesda doesn't know how but world scaling works. They they really they that mission feels so weird scaling wise. I don't get it. It's it's almost like that game was like in its original design. It was in, designed without level scaling in mind, and then they added level scaling really late into the development. That a lot of that game like that's that's a lot of my big problem with it. It's just the world levels around you, and like nothing is actually. It doesn't feel like an actual cohesive world because no matter what, like fucking. I'm going to be able to punch a death claw from point one to point zero in Fallout 3. I, I can take a death claw. It doesn't matter. 
like there that's that was like the thing about the crippled one that really fucks with me is like oh it's supposed to be introducing it as this big huge bad entity that i can just barely take down even at like it's dying breath but then like from if you can beat one one on one for the most part throughout that game anyway i feel like that they they can be tough they can be for sure but in new vegas you walk down the street and then three of them come out and do that to you and no matter what you do, you're not getting through fucking Deathclaw Junction. <laughs> yeah. No matter what you do, you're not getting through there. Even at level 50, they'll still come up and... Because they're just strong enemies in the game. It feels like three different people played three different playthroughs of it when it was being made. And they they all had different experiences. Like, oh, maybe one was, maybe one was a dick to certain people, so he got a mercenary uh, company on his ass. Like, the talent company. So he's fucking with them the whole time. And then, like, you want, they, he wanted to, one wanted to side with Moria and fill out this book and shit. But then it seems like they just kind of mashed all these playthroughs together to where you can do it all at once. But also, you're having the consequences of, of it all at once to where what you're doing isn't really affecting anything. Like, have you ever looked at, like, what... Have you ever read what the actual perks and traits do in Fallout 3? Quite a bit of them, yeah. They're just numbers going up. Almost all of them are just increase first aid by this amount. Increase fucking yeah. guns by this amount. It's not even, like, damage and effects. It's just numbers going up. Yeah. Oh, increase small guns and big guns by five. And then you got the fucking... The Slayer perk in <laughs> Fallout of New Vegas that you have to invest into two different play styles to get and then you get fucking speed that breaks the game animations i will say fallout new vegas has some bad perks yeah for like sure like shining armor <laughs> but at least it's better than a number going up it doesn't work it doesn't work which in, one in shining armor what is i that just if reflects, you wear metal armor it has a chance to reflect yeah. laser armor back right energy weapons energy weapons yeah. guess what guess what in the game they put what it reflects back energy. They didn't write weapons, so that perk doesn't work. In base game, that perk does nothing. At all. Uh, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Here and Now sucks. Fuck Here and Now. I like Here and Now. It's a waste. It you is a waste. You have a limited amount of perks in that game. But sometimes I just want to watch my experience bar go from zero to full instantly. Sometimes I play I play runs where I'm like less perk insensitive and more insensitive on skills going up. Just get Sometimes. intelligence up. Yeah. That's why I always start with at least like eight intelligence. Here, here and now is definitely a trap. You're, yeah. yeah. When you explained it to me when we were playing recently, I was like, oh fuck, I never thought about it like that. Like most of the perks are such a huge buff, you're just robbing yourself. Yeah, you got to think of perks as a limited resource. They are a limited resource. You only get twenty five. Yeah. yeah. You don't think of them as, oh, I get one every other level. You think of them as, oh, I only get 25. Yeah. Most people don't even max out. I usually max out my New Vegas character. I it's have. Easy. It's easy. I don't always. It's easy. You shut up. There are so many different ways that you can... You can, like, in um, just Good Springs itself, I think you can go up to Chet and farm to, like, level 15 off of a speech dialogue in, like, eight minutes. Just like, yeah, we, we need armor. Can you give us armor? Okay, you'll give us armor. Hey, we need armor. Can you give us armor? Okay, you'll give us armor. Hey, we need... You can just do that over and over and over again. See, you're falling into the trap of, is it game design or an exploit? That's a feature. See, that's the trap. That's that's a feature. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'll buy this broken thing from you. Hey, here's this full condition thing. Yeah, oh, it's broken now? Oh, I'll buy it back. Oh, when it's in my inventory, it's fixed? Oh, here you go for full price. I forgot about that. You can do that to every merchant in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Uh, <laughs> that's a feature. You can do it in Fallout 4, too, with fusion coils. That was like, a, they finally fixed it after a while, but in like early Fallout 4 when it first came out, you could do that with fusion coils. And I remember like one of the moments where I was like, okay, I'm done with this game was when they patched that out. And I was like, yeah, I'm done. They took the fun out, bye. Um, Imagine if they came out tomorrow and patched all of the shit out of Oblivion. I was thinking about that the other day. Every exploit, every bug, imagine if they patched it out. That's what they've been doing all this time. Uh, that's what Bethesda's been doing. That's what Skyrim is, it's just unpatched Oblivion. They've been patching out alteration magic. <laughs> yeah. Tell them about your uh, 
your time playing on PlayStation 3? Fallout, was it New Fallout Vegas? Fallout in Vegas. Okay, I will, I will die on this hill. I will double down and die on this hill. The Xbox 360 is a better system than the PS3. It has better hardware. It, its hardware might kill itself out quicker, but in that time that it, you can keep that motherfucker running, it will run better than the PS3. I, I just want to say real quick, I prefer the PS3. It, the PS3 definitely lasts longer. I have I have now played Fallout New Vegas and Oblivion, a full complete playthrough on PC, Xbox 360, and PS3. And the best pat platform to play that fucking game on is the 360. And I will die on that. Fallout New Vegas is definitely PC. Do not play Fallout New Vegas on the PS3. It just does not fucking work. It caches your saves. Every time it saves, it caches it into the system. So after just like 50 hours of playing, your game just does not run. I had to say bye-bye to Stupid Ugly, my very lovely, fucking lawful, good, wandering doctor scientist. The man, the myth, the legend. I'll put it, we can put a picture of him up on screen because I still have pictures of him on my phone. Fucking poor, poor, dumb, stupid, ugly. Because by the time I got to Lonesome Road, I didn't even get to make it to 50. I was level 40 fucking nine. <laughs> I was level 49. He couldn't, if I took three steps out, the frames would just drop to three frames a second. And like the fix was to, um, you have to make hard saves and just only use hard saves on the PS3. But by the time I'd figured that out, I already had a save that had auto saved like 10,000 plus times. I tried clearing the cache on the PS3 and it didn't work. There's, it just fucked me. That's stupid. That is a flaw of the system that it caches saves like that. That is stupid and bad. That is terrible. Plus, it just doesn't run as well as the Xbox 360. I've tested it side by side to prove with Skylar that the Xbox 360 can handle more objects on screen than the PS3 can. I duped objects at Oblivion the exact amount. And the Xbox 360 handled it way better. The PS3 crashed. And we had to restart the console. The 360 worked just fine. I'm just saying. I don't know how there's even an argument about it. The Red Rings of Death. That's why there's an argument about it. That's how. <sighs> well, everything was part of the console wars. Yeah. Um, I'll say I, I played more Oblivion, Skyrim... New Vegas and Fallout 3 on the PS3 than on any other console. And the reason I brought it up was the exploit with the repair condition for Fallout 3. I was using that the entire playthrough of Fallout 3. I got to um, Point Lookout, the Swamp DLC. Yeah. I get to the first merchant. I do it. The UI breaks a little bit. Uh -oh. I'd do it again. You, I breaks a little more. <laughs> oh, no. You never told me about this. I did it over and <laughs> over and over again. Every time, the UI was breaking more and more and more. Oh. Where, like, you could see, like, lines coming out from the middle of the screen coming outwards and shit. <laughs> you were I, taking away the Matrix. I exit the menu. The second I turn away from the merchant, the second the camera moves, <laughs> the, everything breaks. The screen goes black. And there's lines here and there. Like, the world, like, shaders and shit, I guess. You took the world working. apart. You dismantled it. That, that exploit broke my save file completely. I, I, I loaded. It didn't work. I saved and loaded. It didn't work. My last save was, like, ten hours before that. I had beat the game since my last save. I beat the game, finished, because DLC lets you finish after, go on after the campaign. Beat the game, went to Point Lookout, and then my game broke. Back when I used to play it, in back when it came out, before New Vegas was even out, I um my my save was slowing down. Now I would literally save and load. Look at my file size on my save. <laughs> if it was too high, I would just save and load again. Until it was like I think it was like in the four thousands, it would it would run. Yeah, that's okay. the thing is it shows you how many like bits are in it. And yeah. stupid ugly was like forty or fifty thousand. He had so much. Yeah, once it gets up to a certain point, it's that that character is done. It's done. Yeah, it's that's that file is complete. <laughs> that file is complete. It has reached capacity. Poor stupid ugly. I didn't know. I yeah. would have saved him. I didn't know. The moment, the, like, I remember when I first realized, because I never played on a PS3 until we were hanging out, and I remember when... You've never had one, right? Yeah, I never had one. I never had my own. Yeah. 
And um, I remember I was like, I want to play Dragon Age Origins, and you were playing something on your computer, and I'd usually play it while you while you were just doing other things. And you're like, I got it on PS3, just play that. And I was like, oh yeah, I can do that. And I started the game, and the texture quality is so much n- notably worse that I immediately was like, what the fuck is wrong with this game? What is happening? And you were like, looks fine to me. <laughs> and it, it looked like there was static. I was looking at it through, like, static. Do you think me... Oh, that's do, it. Do you that's think... the episode. Wait, wait, wait. Do you think me playing PlayStation for so long... PS3 specifically. That probably has contributed to why you're okay with low textures. I really don't graphics. care about yeah. low textures <laughs> and shit. That's probably why, yeah. I'm taking a dab on episode. Okay. That's the 45 minutes you get from Yeah, me. we set a timer. We started watching an H Bomber guy video. Watch was... H Bomber guy's new video. He's great. I love him. Yeah, we started watching it first thing in the morning. In the morning. Yeah, I woke up at 9 p.m. We uh first started watching it. When we woke up. When we woke up. And we were like, yeah, we'll record a podcast, just a shorter one. And then, like, two hours into the video, we were like, okay, so uh, we should record. Two hours into the video, I was like. Well, I was thinking it. I was like, god damn, how much longer is in this video? Because I wanted to wait until the video was over. You really died on that hill, huh? Hey, we waited. Yeah. And we recorded. Yep. Um, so, yeah, we set a timer because we don't want a super long podcast to edit again. So, uh. Yeah. The yeah, other one will, 45 minutes. The other one, they can listen to me take a dab. That's fine. The other one will probably, we'll probably use at some point. Yeah. It was a good sky. Okay, so I had fucked up and I got really high <laughs> before we did it. So I, a lot of it just kind of descends into me being like, oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. And then I start drooling on myself at one point. And then Skylar, like, he really saved the day because he was just talking. <laughs> Well, I know sometimes I can fall into the trap of just sitting there and not talking, so I try to make a point to be like, oh yeah, I should talk more. My thing is, is I don't want anything to be scripted, but I just always want to have something of substance to say. I want to be able to think back and be like, I said something pretty insightful on that. Yeah. I think that marks the end of the episode. Um, well, hopefully we edit this soon. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!